Good morning, and welcome to a Bible study here at Hurricane Baptist Church. We have a little 10 minute session that we've been doing here for a while now. And we're talking about what the Bible says to the believer. And you know, it's it's so important that we understand what the Bible does say to us and how we interact and, and react to how God works in our lives. And uh, this portion that we're studying right now is what your relationship with others should be. We talk about husband wife relationship, and we've talked about you know all these other different relationships. Now we're talking about the, the young married woman. And we started at the, in our last session. And uh, we kind of got a little bit into that, so I'm going to back up and start off a little bit uh, again earlier into that, and uh, we'll get a little refresher, and then we'll get into the rest of it. So it said, talks about that the young married woman are to live wisely, pure, and committed to your husband and your children. Over in Titus chapter two, verses four and five, he says that that they may teach the young women to be sober, uh, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good obedient to their own husbands, notice that, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be not blasphemed. I stood again. So here's the, the training of the, of the older woman to the younger woman. How a young a married woman should be like? It's how should you behave? Here it talks about in verse 4 there, do love your husband. And uh, the idea is to do for your husband and the husband do for the wife. We'll talk about that here a little bit later for the husband. But right now I'm talking about the young, uh, young lady, young woman who just got married, um, we're bound together, we're going to have a life together, they need to love one another. She needs to love her husband, and again, uh, she needs to be focused on her own husband. You know, it's it's kind of like the relationship between uh, Jesus and his followers, his disciples. You, you have that love one for another, and, and you do what you can one for another. Jesus takes care of us, and, and we're to, to do what we can to help him to reach this world and bring others to the kingdom. And a young woman uh, just married in that, she needs to be sure she focuses on her her husband, and, and if the Lord blesses them with children, to bless, take care of the children. You're to, to love your children. It says that you might uh, love your husband and love your children. In other words, do what's best for your husband, do what's best for your children. And to, have a, to make that a, a commitment, you know, um, even, in the, even in the animal kingdom, you, you see, especially with uh, animals and their, their offspring, like a bear with her cubs, you know, we, around here, if you see uh, some cubs in that, and uh, there's a, um, you know, there's a mother bear around someplace, you don't want to get between her and the cubs. That is a, not a good place to be because they're very protective of their, their young, and that. so that's uh, a mother is supposed to love her husband and to take care of her children and really be protective of her children and do what's best for them. Uh, she ought to be self-controlled. Go back to verse 5, there's to be discreet, be chaste, uh, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands again, that the word of God be not blasphemed. So she's supposed to, to uh, take care of her home, take care of her family, be self-controlled. Uh, you're not to live a life of um, a wild life or like, like an undisciplined life. Uh, we live in a time now when uh, we see a lot of uh, young women in, in their marriages, and we'll talk young men later, but the idea that they're more open and they, they really get out into the world more. As a Christian now, as a Christian, we're to be uh, obedient to what God wants us to be so we can be that testimony, that witness. So uh, a, a young woman's supposed to be pure, morally and sexually pure to her husband. That He says uh, over here in Matthew 5.20, But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after hath committed adultery with her already. So the idea we don't want to... Uh, draw the attention of other people, other men. We want a young woman to be chased, to be controlled. Uh, she should be busy at home and, and uh, taking care of her family. And I know that some, in some cases, uh, women are required to work. And, you know, they work outside the home. So we talked about that earlier, about the responsibilities of, of uh, a husband then with a wife has to help support by working outside the home then what his responsibility is. But we're looking at the young woman now. A young married woman, you'd be kind and good. We have good character, virtuous, good-natured, caring. Over in First uh, Timothy 5.13, he says, And with all they learn to be uh, idle, wandering about from house to house, not only idle, but tattlers also busy body, speaking things which they ought not. So the idea is that you keep busy so you're not doing the, the gossiping. And I'd be going around doing those things that are against uh, what God would have you to do. And be subject to your own husband. Again, uh, that's... As subjection, that means that we, we work together, okay? It's uh, the idea of there's it's a partnership. It's a partnership. A husband and wife, they're partners in a joint venture. And they're to be working together. So that, uh, in this case here, we're talking about the young, the young wife, the young woman, to be contributing her part to the partnership. It takes two. 
you know, the old, you used to have that old song about it takes two to tango, love and marriage. Well, it takes two in a partnership in marriage. It takes both people working at it. And it, it is, there is a working to it to keep it, uh, keep that marriage together and keep that love alive and keep, keep caring for one another. And again, the, the focus is, uh, you know, to focus on your spouse. Uh, you know, the Lord is a, is a jealous God, we read. And why is he a jealous God? What's he saying there? He says, he wants all of our attention. He wants all of our love. And you know, the, the husband, the wife in that relationship, uh, in this case here, the young, the young woman, uh, her husband wants all of her love. And she's supposed to be uh, then committed to him and to show him that love, to keep that partnership alive and, and so that uh, uh, their marriage will flourish and be a blessing to God. Um, the Word of God is alive. We don't want to be, uh, be living according to the Word of God as I've been reading these scripture to you. And God, is, God gives us his guidebook on how we should live in each, each part of this relationship. Here we look at the young woman, the wife. What is her responsibility here? And we need to understand what that responsibility is, and then we need to, to do it. Uh, we need to study the Bible and read the Bible. He talks about in the Hebrews 4.12, he says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a, listen, that's this part, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. See, God don't, not only sees what we do, which other people do also, but God knows what's down here. What are your intentions? Why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you living the way that you're living? And we want uh, that heart to be spent right uh, toward God. We want to be focused on the husband. The, the young woman needs to study God's Word. She needs to know God's Word too. When we have uh, children come into the family to be raised in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, the wife, you know, the wife needs to understand God's Word. She needs to study God's Word and be involved in that so when it comes time to raise her children, her and her husband together can raise their children in nurture and admonition of the Word. They can use the Bible. Um, we want to uh, be sure that they spend their time wisely, that they are developing that, that uh, Christ-like attitude. And uh, reading, you know, reading uh, the scripture that I just talked about in Titus and over in, in Timothy, that they understand what what is going on, what God expects from you. You want to, uh, to me, I always look at, at the, the marriage situation. We want a marriage that what? That blesses God. And if it blesses God, we know that it's be the right kind of marriage. And that they'll be drawing closer and closer. And what happens sometimes is if we start drifting apart, we need to go back and start praying and start studying the Word of God, drawing closer to God. And if you're both doing that, you know what? You're going to be drawing closer to each other. And your marriage will be one that will be a blessing to God. So the young woman, this is what her responsibility is for her part of it. And so we want to look at them. We're going to look at it here in a moment, in, uh, or tomorrow probably, at the, the young married man and what he's supposed to do. But uh, I think that... Uh, if we want to go back and just got a, uh, a key, what if, now sometimes as you teach and as you preach, we look, what is the key? What, what are we trying to accomplish in, the, in our teaching, our preaching here? And I think the, the key to this uh, young wife, the young married woman, is that, that she is focused on her husband and her children, on her family. That's not saying you don't do other things. It's not saying don't get involved in other things and that, you know, there's other things that we can do too. But the, the, her main her priority, okay, we know that Christ is the main priority in life for the individual, whether you're married or not. But for the young married woman, that her priority is to, to take care of her husband and to take care of her children, to demonstrate her love for them, that they feel secure in her love. And then we look at the other side of that coin too. But the idea in this study right here we're talking about the young married woman and I believe if she's if she's submissive to her husband and I mean mean that in a good way not not a doormat not a subservient or anything else but submissive as his the lead as he's the head of the body as he's the head of the family and she they work together to bring this marriage to what it should be to bless God and then God can bless you so let's uh, we'll pray now and and uh, you know if you have questions about these things just go through the Bible and, and read what God says and what your responsibility is. And listen, take it for what it says. God, listen, He is not God. We talk about this word submission and all that, and I know people get all uptight about it, but God does not uh, want anybody to be inferior or anything else. He, he loves everybody, and He wants it to be a blessing to you and a blessing to others. He wants what's best for you in all cases. Let's pray. Father, we do just thank you for this day and for this time and for this study. 
and we pray you'd be with each one of us as we walk this pathway of life in our in our marriage relationships, that we would have a marriage that would be a blessing to you, that the husband-wife relationship would be one that you can honor and that you can lift up, Lord, and you can bless. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for marriage. We thank you for families. And we just pray you'd be with us. Guide us and use us in a way that will please you. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.